here to speak. Yes, Senator Emily Dill, Reverend Dr. Emily Dill, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. In my congratulatory comments earlier today, I shared regarding the 59th anniversary of Mr. Kelly Zhu as a gospel radio announcer. I had the opportunity to speak with Mr. Zhu recently, and I was both amazed and inspired by his journey. It began with a conversation with an educator who challenged him to declare what his interests were and what career he would like to pursue if given an opportunity to do so. This conversation sparked a desire in Mr. Zhu to do all within his power to work towards training to become a radio announcer. Although that appeared to be a lofty goal for a young black male at that time, Mr. Zhu held fast mm -hmm. to it. And then he went out to work in another field, saved his money until he, along with his parents, were able to save enough funds for him to travel overseas to enroll in a course of study at the Royal Academy that would prepare him for the career of his choice. Mr. Zhu dared to believe that he could, and he did. He put aside fears and negative pronouncements, and he walked boldly into his destiny. The example set by Mr. Zhu to relentlessly pursue his personal career goal is a reminder to all of us of the importance of setting goals and putting a process in place to ensure that the goal is achieved. The, and this morning, I have listened uh, to my colleagues and I hear the plea, their pleas as they, I too am disheartened when I hear the grueling statistics regarding violent acts in our community. But let us be reminded that this is symptomatic of the lawlessness which is pervasive throughout the world. This is not uh, a situation that is germane to Bermuda alone, but it is being experienced everywhere. But we as a community must press on. This morning, we have heard of a multiplicity of initiatives which are being put in place. And I am encouraged by that. We heard about the skills development program training. We heard about the launch of the Bermuda UN Economic Partnership. We are excited about the restructuring of our education system and the in introduction of our signature learning program. We also were excited to hear about the plan for the development of Northeast Hamilton. One of the things that was extremely encouraging was we have heard over the last few weeks of the graduation of students from institutions both here and overseas, and in particular, the graduating class that had a majority of males from the Cedar Bridge Academy. These and so many other stories, which rarely make the headlines and often get relegated to the inner pages of the Island's Daily Gazette, give rise to our spirits that we as a country, we are moving in the right direction. And although we are coming through a very difficult period that has uh, presented unprecedented challenges, that we can move forward. That as we continue to come here each week and pass bills until they become laws, as we continue to put our heads together to come up with strategies that we as a country can move forward with continued perseverance, strategic innovations, and a positive mindset, we can indeed create a better and a fairer 
Bermuda and provide strong leadership for all of us. So I want to thank all of my colleagues here in the Senate and our members of parliament and our ministers and our civil servants and all of those that are working and committed to making this community the community that we need for it to be. And I am daring to believe, like Mr. Zhu, that if there is a goal that you want to achieve, that together we can put our heads together, we can put strategies in place, and we must positively work towards a better Bermuda. As Ms. Lindsay Simmons just said, Senator Simmons, about the importance of every life and the importance of each one of us doing whatever it is that we can to ensure that each life is saved and that Bermuda continues to be an island paradise that we all can enjoy. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Senator Reverend Dr. Emily Dill. Would any other senator care to 